In this video I'm making the Hammer, a mini ITX tribute to Marcin Gortat and his years spent with the Washington Wizards. The Hammer is 16cm wide, 23cm tall and 31cm deep. It's made from plywood, PETG and a t-shirt and it cost me less than $10 to build. Before I go on, I'd like to thank my patrons. I really appreciate your support. Let's start from the frame, which I designed with 10th of a millimeter precision. Its key feature is modularity. Each piece has a set of anchoring points allowing for a variety of arrangements. This way I can use the same components in future prototypes with different layouts. Frame elements are connected using joints and M3 bolts. All pieces were printed in PETG on an Ender 3 on a glass bed at 0.3mm layer height. I'm not a 3D printer expert, so my prints do leave a lot to be desired, but in case of the frame, all I cared about is that it's solid. Notice that the power supply and the mini ITX motherboard pieces feature integrated standoffs. If you wonder why the power supply frame support is so small, it's because I'm using HDplex Nano ATX PSU. After removing the brim from every print, I tapped all holes, even ones that I didn't think I would use. Even though I could probably get away with tapping PEDG using a power drill, I decided to do it manually. After everything was prepared, I assembled the frame to see if everything was in order, which did require some filing here and there. And sure enough, it turned out that I forgot to make anchoring points on one side of the motherboard frame. So I made the joining element flat on one side and glued it to the frame. With set joints design, the frame wasn't straight, but I managed to fix that with anchoring points. The shell is made from plywood, and the original idea was to bend it to get those nice round corners. So I picked up two sheets of 10mm thick plywood, cut to size 78 by 31cm. I marked cutting points and went to this makerspace called FabLab here in Warsaw. It was the first time I had a chance to use power tools as pleased without bothering neighbors, and I enjoyed every minute of it. First, I trimmed one of the longer edges at 45 degrees. Next, I proceeded with making grooves at bending points. While you're busy watching the epic b-roll, I'd like to thank FabLab for letting me use their workshop. It's a great space for makers with all different kinds of tools. 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC, you name it, they got it. I'll have their website linked in the description so you can check it out. And no, I didn't get paid to say this. I really like the place and I'll be going back there for sure. With the plywood ready for bending, I wrapped my workbench and sprayed water along the cuts. After dumping almost a liter of H2O, I attempted to make the bend. I was very cautious not to break anything, but I just felt it won't work. I did this trick on a smaller sample the other day, but for some reason it didn't extrapolate to a larger piece. If you know what might have gone wrong there, please let me know, I'd really like to learn how to do this right. So I came up with a plan B. I cut the plywood to pieces and got this round wooden corner thingy. I cut it a little shorter than the length of the case as I needed corners trimmed at 45 degrees and didn't know how to do it other than design it and print it. I eyeballed the GPU air vent in the bottom and cut it with a jigsaw. With the wooden pieces ready, I glued this 3D puzzle together. Those corner pieces I mentioned earlier are my first designs using Fusion 360. It took me a while to find my ways around it, but once I figured out how to do things I could do in SketchUp, I've never looked back. Apart from completing the outline, corners also have spots for small magnets to hold the front cover in place. I printed them as everything else in PETG and the prints did require some trimming. Eventually, I glued each in place and moved on to fixing up the surface. I used filler with bits of fiber around the 3D printed corners and a regular wood filler for the rest of the case. While waiting for the filler to dry, I screwed in these small magnets. I didn't really know what magnets will work, so I ordered a handful in different sizes. After the filler has dried, I sent it down the surface. The last thing to do inside was fixing frame anchoring points that will make sure the frame remains in place at all times. One on the side that connects to the fan frame the other one on the bottom surface that would screw into the GPU support. 
As you already know, I finished the case with fabric. This way, I didn't have to spend hours preparing the case and then some painting it. That really cool looking finish is thanks to my cousin Mike, who got me this matching Gorta t-shirt years ago and I haven't worn it once as it was two sizes too big. I cut the t-shirt on the side and cut off sleeves. After figuring out how I want to lay out front and back, I asked my lovely wife to help me out with sewing. The original idea was to make it like an easily removable sleeve that could be taken off for cleaning or maybe swapped with something different. But with such elastic material, it would be hard to make the edges align perfectly with the plywood, so I figured I glued the two together. Just before that, I gave it a quick wash to remove any marks and ironed it. First, I glued the back and then the front, making sure the material is evenly stretched. The corners were a bit tricky, but I took my time and managed to get decent results. When the glue dried, I cut off the excess of the fabric. I also made an opening on the bottom for the GPU air vent and glued the fabric to plywood. I filled the void with some filtering material. I know I should have designed and printed a removable dust filter, but I had very little time to finish the project. To allow some air in, I printed a set of 1cm high feet. I applied some glue onto the fabric to make it solid so the screw doesn't catch the thread when screwing down the standoffs. The front cover has a utilitarian design, but it fits the project quite well. I had to split the object in half as the Ender 3 was a bit too small to print it in one piece. The print is far from perfect, but good enough for prototyping. It would have looked much better printed at 0.2mm layer height and in PLA, but the PDG was the only black filament I had. I tried getting rid of those strings of filament with a heat gun and almost ruined the print. Fortunately, the damage is barely noticeable. I glued both pieces together and I didn't think it would work as there is very little contact surface, but after attaching washers in all four corners and fixing filtering material, the front seems solid enough. I also designed and printed a back cover. Again, I had to split it in half to print it on my Ender 3. When the first half was printed, I realized I forgot to add power connector and power button. I managed to fit the power connector in the bottom part of the back cover, but there wasn't enough space left for the button. So I modeled a small add-on that would glue nicely in the top right corner. I fixed some filtering material to cover the large opening, and I was ready to put everything together. First, I attached the fan to its frame, which had to be removed in order to access all screws. As you may have noticed, the fan piece had to be fixed on the other side of the neighboring power supply frame. This is due to the fact that the originally designed shell was a bit larger. After implementing Plan B, the inner dimensions shrank to centimeters, so the entire frame assembly barely fit in. As for the power supply, once again, I reached for the HDplex Nano ATX. I know it's not the cheapest option out there, but I absolutely adore this thing for how small it is and convenient when you're designing custom small form factor cases. Next in went the motherboard with the 8-core Ryzen 1800X CPU cooled by the Noctua low-profile heatsink. Then I fixed the GPU bracket support, dropped the GPU in and secured it with a bolt. For purpose of prototyping, I'm using a GTX 1050 that I have lying around. Next, I screwed in the power connector assembly and attached the motherboard back cover with the power button in place. Last but not least was the bottom part of the back cover. With hardware assembled, I slid the entire contraption into the shell and fixed it to the anchors. I popped on the front cover and the hammer was completed. On to the mandatory evaluation. CPU thermal throttles to 3.5 GHz when running Prime95. Mind you, this is the worst case scenario type of load as pretty much no real software puts so much stress on the CPU. The video card hit 60 degrees running Unigine Valley Benchmark, but this is rather low TDP GPU, so it's no surprise that it doesn't run that hot. The hammer is rather quiet, even under full load. When it comes to design, the frame is missing an anchoring point at the back that would prevent the motherboard from tilting slightly towards the inside of the case. This issue could be addressed by redesigning the mounting points and joints. The fabric wrinkles a little bit here and there. It would have looked better if it was glued to the plywood on the entire surface. A printer with a larger print volume would be nice to have. 
Despite all those issues, I still really like the end result. It looks pretty cool and very different from what we're used to seeing. Ok, this is it for now. If you have a minute, check out my Patreon site for frequent updates on current and future projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.